All right, everybody. Welcome to The Happy Husband. And I just want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Today is very exciting. Today's show is uh, something that's been dear in my heart. And that is to talk to you about uh, some of the things that women need to know about immature males. Emotionally depleted males is what I call it. And then there's a movement out there as far as uh, educating people about the emotional uh, intelligence. Um, and there's a little um, woman that I follow on Facebook, not little, but you know, a woman I follow on the web. And um, her name is Kelly. And um, she has a, a little course on that. And so um, she feels, and I think a lot of feels that when it comes down to hooking up, when it comes down to uh, comes down to trying to find a mate or soulmate in life that we got this thing in this earth called dating, right? And so uh, a lot of things are, are happening, happening, and a lot of people are going through trauma. A lot of people are getting killed. A lot of people are getting beat, um, trying to find a mate. And it just wasn't supposed to be um, like this. And so uh, one of the things that the Lord put in my heart is that I have started a workshop that's going to be national. And you, and if you're interested, just you can host it. But I'm going to, to house to house, like the Bible says, uh, preaching the Apostle uh, Creed. And so in other words, is that I'm going around and this movement that I'm doing is called uh, Choosing to be Found. Choosing to to be found. And this has to do with uh, men and women out there who got tired of the dating game, who got tired of, of these crazy relationships and being hurt and stabbed and wound and left for dead. They got so tired of it that they absolutely disavow meeting somebody. And, and I don't think that's the Lord. And so if you came across this program today, um, hear me today because God really has this on his heart. And that is that God wants you to be married. God wants you because one of the first thing is say go and replenish the earth. I mean that's you know that started out in Genesis and here we are living in times of revelation. And so God wants you to replenish the earth. God wants you to um, have family. God wants you to do that. The thing about that is he wants you to do it his way, right? And that's very important. And so as we go through this, this workshop that, you know, that's going to go and we're going to start off in the D.C. area first and we're going to take it across the United States and we're doing it in house churches or we're doing it in people homes uh, because I expect deliverances. I expect great ministry to happen. And sometimes on a Sunday morning, that just can't get done. Matter of fact, Sunday morning is not designed is not designed for that. And so, um, let's just kind of pull back and, and and think about this, okay, for a moment. What God wants to do, what God wants to happen into the earth, and you could tell God is for marriages, and the reason why God is for marriages because the Bible actually said that in the end times it'd be illegal to marry. Right. So whatever mood you see or, or whatever um, you see, like on um, uh, gay agendas or all these other different agendas about wanting to get married. I just want to tell you, that's a fake. You know, that's a that's that's a fake. That's that's a fake. Um, uh, the enemy desire is to do it with marriage. One hundred percent. Right. So just kind of. Let's kind of keep that in, in mind. That is the enemy desire. The enemy desire is that, that the whole earth be in fornication, right? And so as I begin to search out different movements in the earth and different religious leaders and spiritual leaders that come to the forefront, I'm finding out that they have a devilish, um, philosophy when it comes to 
sex before marriage. Devilish, man. And they preach love and peace and harmony, and but yet they still have sex outside the bounds of marriage. And so eventually um, the world going to get together and they're going to do away with marriage, which shows you that marriage is God's ideal. And so um, some of us have been out there, uh, was married before, and um, some hasn't, haven't been, but we've all been in relationships. And whatever side of the fence you are, that if you over a certain age, and I mean like 16 or 18, you have experienced heartbreak in the relationship aisle of the store, right? That you had your uh, share of heartbreak. You you had your share of, of hurt. You had your share of, of trauma. And so this is some of the things that I want to talk to you about that some of the things that I believe that women need to know in order to deal with a emotionally depleted male and the consequences of having relationship with men who are not able to give to you that which you need, right? With that which you desire and that's what you built for. And so Let's start off with this, this scripture right here, and then uh, we can go on. The, the Bible says in Proverbs, and this is one of my, my favorite Proverbs, and the Bible says that a soft answer turns away wrath. That's what the Bible says. And so there are other things that the Bible talks about. Also in Book of Proverbs, it says, do not make friends with an angry man. It says that right there. And that was not just for females and males. It's also males to males. And so the Bible is great for correction and training and righteousness and rebuking, right? And so when I say a soft answer turns away Ralph, either that's a confirmation to you or you're going to feel a little sting with that because you don't answer back softly, okay? And then the Bible says, do not make friends with an angry man. It says it clear as day, and yet people have found themselves in relationships with angry men. So the first note is, is this such thing, and I hope you're taking notes today, is this such thing as an angry man? And the answer is yes. So how do we know that? We can go as far as back in the book of Genesis about Cain and Abel and about the first murder. Here, the Bible's talking about there was Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. They didn't mention anybody else on the earth at that time, or at least in the garden, right? At least in the garden. And so, and people got, you know, can debate that all day. Was there more people? Who was the other people? There were different races, different humans, whatever. But we know, according to the Bible, at that time, it was Cain and Abel, and that God asked them both to give a sacrifice. And Cain and Abel brought what they brought forth, right? One brought forth meat, another one brought vegetables. And God wanted the meat, and he didn't want the vegetables. And that might talk to some of your vegans out there. Now, I know I'm poking, right? I know I'm poking. But, you know, God is a meat eater. Let's just say that. And so by faith, you know? And so and I know you can say, well, he didn't speak everybody put those, all those chemicals in it. Well, that might be true. But, you know, God is a meat eater. And so uh, one brother grew jealous of the other brother. And they said he rose up and killed his brother. Now, when we talk about this, this, this slaying, when we talk about uh, this murder that happened at the beginning of time, the reason why I'm bringing that up is that that was in the beginning, and so is it now. If that makes sense to you guys, that what it was in the beginning. That that what it was uh, when God um, made Adam and Eve, and then brought forth, you know, a children, you know, and in that time, this showed that the anger was already in the earth. And so one of the things that 
we want to make clear that in the beginning, Cain was an angry man. And Abel pleased God. Now, I, I, want, I want you to get this picture as we go into what you need to know about a emotional depleted male, right? Because this is real important that you see this principle already working in the earth. God asked the two brothers for a sacrifice. Cain tilled the ground, Abel tilled the sheep. Are you with me? Cain brought forth fruits and vegetables unto the Lord. Abel brought his sheep forth, which is an indication of the Christ. Way back then, it was a type and shadow. Are you with me? The Bible says that God didn't have respect unto Cain's sacrifice, but he received and accepted Abel. The Bible says when that happened, Cain got really mad, and they use the King James word, wrath. Cain got wrath in him, and his countenance fell. So it showed you that Cain was somehow in his life was emotionally depleted. His countenance fell, and God didn't understand it because this is this is the point that God made. And could God asked Cain, why are you wroth? And why are your countenance falling? Why are you looking sad, son? Then he says this. If you do well, won't you be accepted? And if, and if you don't do well, sin lieth at your door. For unto thee shall be his desire, and that shall rule over him. And but then later they said that Cain talked to his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. So let's go ahead and take this now as we go over the theme of what you need to know by emotional depleted males. Abel did right unto the Lord. Cain did not do right. But God says, you can do right. Are you with me? You can do right. He said, but if you choose not to do right, then sin lay it at your door. Cain then took Abel, talked to him, took him to the open field, and slew him. Now, I want you to get this. Abel did right. Abel did what the Lord want, but he got killed. Cain didn't do right with God. Cain wasn't paying attention uh, to what the Lord want on his instructions, obviously. But God said, hey, don't worry about it, man. If you do right, I'm on your side. All you got to do is right. But Cain didn't want to do it because he was emotionally depleted. He had no emotional intelligence. And even though he did wrong, even though he got caught, with the fruits and vegetables, he killed the one. See, ladies, I want, I just, I want you to hear this. You don't know how a person is going to respond. You don't know how a person is going to act when he gets rejected. But not only that, you don't know, and this is what you need to know, how a person is going to react when he gets corrected. Many of you are in ungodly relationships. Now, I'm not talking about the married people. I'm talking about the, the youngsters out there that you are fornicating without being married. And that's just the truth. And, and that's the, the name, that's reality. And today we, we talk about reality in the world that we live in. And that sometimes when you get in relationships, you put on that male husband's duties because that's what you've seen in the movies. That's what you see in your mama's life, your auntie's life, your older sister's life. And so you put him, and they actually tell you how to approach that man and how to keep him locked up, so to speak, and what you need to do. But what they're telling you to do to that male is what you can do if it was a husband. Now, I know husbands cheat. 
But before we get to there, let's hit this first section first in this first half of the show. That when you go out with a single male that is not married, when he cheats, or put this way, when he sleeps with another woman, he is not cheating. No matter what he told you that he was going to do, he is not cheating. Why? The reason being is that you two are not in covenant. He is single. He can do what he wants. The moment you start imposing your will on him, he's going to act like the restrictions that you give him, he's going to live under. And you said, well, why don't he just tell me that? Because he is emotionally depleted. He is emotionally a youngster. He has not come into maturity. So this man, this young boy, this grown boy that you're dealing with has no idea what it means to be exclusive. He had no idea what it means to be your only boo, so to speak, because he is just going to agree with you say for a limited time in order to get the sex. Now, we know that. But I'm talking to you today because I'm hoping that those who are listening today have a renewed mind. I'm hoping today that you have found the Lord and did just an area of struggle in your life. Maybe you didn't have a father. Maybe you didn't have a, a, a uncle or older male to school you on these things. And all you had was women to school you on these things. And I'm not saying that your mother and your aunt cannot bring insight, but they cannot get you to understand the thinking of a male. Only a male, like me, a male, can tell you how men think. And then even as we tell you how men think, you will never think like a man because you're not wired like a man. Amen. You, you're not supposed to be wired like a man. You're supposed to be wired like God made you. And your life will be fruitful. Listen to what I'm saying. Be fruitful when you embrace how God made you, just like I embrace how God made me. Now, the thing about it is you said, well, men push women down. And then so you might desire to be like a male. No, your success is to be what God has called you to be. Your future is to be what God has called you to be. Now, what has God called you to be? Well, I'm not even going to dictate. I'm going to let the word of God dictate to you. What does the Bible tell you how a female is supposed to think or act? Just like I go to the Bible and it tells me how I'm supposed to think and I'm supposed to act. Let me say that again because I think that went over some of your heads. My suggestion is you go, that you go to the Bible, that you go to the Bible and you read the word of God that tells you how to act and how to think and how to behave and what type of character you should have, just like I have to go to the word of God and just like you want your man to go to the word of God so he know how to act. If you send your man to the word of God and to church so he know how to behave yourself, then you also have to go in there and find out what God says about being a woman. And that is very important, you know, that's. So before I go on, I just want you to know that um, you can reach me if you like to at my email at blanecvan.com. And the reason why I'm doing email again, because the, the show that the trend is that um, e email is coming back up, not just texting, because it's more personal. And so you can reach me on my, on my Gmail account. That's blanecvan at Gmail. But also, you can find me on my YouTube channels, which I have two channels. One is called The Happy Husband, and then I have another one called Blaine C. Van, and uh, you can find my recordings there. And also, I have a podcast, uh, which you might be listening to right now, and you can find that on all your podcast channel, and that is The Happy Husband. And then last but not least, I have an Instagram page called Blaine C. Van Ministries. And I'm on TikTok, 
as the happy husband. So these are numerous ways for you to get in contact with me. And also that's thrown out there is that one of my sponsors is, is the uh, Heart to Heart Chapel, um, which I am uh, the co-founder of that. And we do virtual marriages. That's right. We do virtual marriages. And so you can DM me or you can um, email me and I can talk to you and we can start the conversation. If you're desiring to get married, amen, and you find your boo or you or, or you find your, 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 your queen, but money's tight, <laughs> money's tight. And especially if you're second marriage, third or fourth marriage, that you just don't want to do the big thing. And so you might opt for, and this is what my wife did, we opt to go to the justice of the peace. Then we save some money, then we have a big wedding, and then we save some money and had a big reception. And so um, I think that, you know, the way that, the way that money is, um, excuse me, somebody, somebody knocked on my studio door. Uh, the way the money is that you might be um, apt to try to save some money. And so, and not that saying you're going cheap, it's that you could spend that money for your honeymoon and you could spend that money for a nice reception. And so uh, because of the pandemic, you know, uh, virtual weddings are being pressed out. And so, um, yeah, Heart to Heart uh, Chapel is out here sponsoring um, this podcast. And I just want you to know that, you know, uh, it can be nice. And uh, just e email me and I can give you the details on that. And you and your boo could go ahead and get married virtual. Um, and the thing about it is, uh, so you might not even have to be in the same room. You know, he might be um, over in Korea and you'd be here in, in the States and you desire to get married. And so if you've been following me for a while or maybe you don't have a church home or you feel comfortable with that, um, then you might want to look into this if that's, you know, God pressed it on your heart. And also, I just also want to share with you um, about this is that marriage is serious, right? And so this is, that's not a, a uh, marriage mill that part of the po uh, package is that you and your uh, fiance uh, go through a before your marriage class. And depending on what package you have, uh, it can vary. We have three levels on, on that. You know, uh, a, a four hour uh, before your marriage, a six hour and, a, and an eight hour. And so you can just kind of look at the packages and see which one your husband want to do. And we go through it and then we talk about some of the, the, the questions and issues that you should be answering and asking each other before you take this serious com commitment. So just think about Heart to Heart Chapel and, and know you know, that, that we love you and we want you to have a long and successful uh, marriage. Now, going back about this emotional uh, depleted male, one of the things that, as I shared earlier, is that the Bible says that a calm answer turns away in wrath. But in the case of Cain and Abel, you know, they didn't say that Abel next thing was saying loud words against Cain. And that Cain rose up against his brother because of jealousy, because of anger. Now, Rihanna and Chris Brown, remember that fiasco? Remember that? And one of the things that happened was that Rihanna approached Chris Brown about him cheating on her. And Chris Brown's a superstar, and I'm sure that he's tempted every night of his concert series, right? And in between some. And so Bianca hooked up with an emotional depleted male. Now, how do I know that? Well, the answer is that Rihanna went to Chris, confronted him about his affair, and he beat her. Now, I, I don't think you listen to me today. Rihanna was done wrong. Abel, Abel did right before the Lord. It's the same thing. You know, she didn't do anything wrong. She approached Chris. And she said, look, man, 
I heard that you're sleeping around with, with, with other women. Now, no matter how beautiful you think Rihanna is or how superstar she might have been or how much money she had, everybody's human. We all are humans, no matter how far we put them up on the pedestal. And I'm sure she is faced with doubts. I'm sure she is faced with insecurity. I'm sure she said, look, I, the people call me beautiful. I got paparazzi follow me, taking pictures of me all the time. And, and I got crowd and men are throwing themselves at me. And here I have this man in, in my life and I'm not good enough for him. And I'm sure she was hot. So she approached him thinking, this is what she's thinking. He's wrong. He's wrong. I got him. And I'm going to approach him to let him know. And I'm sure that she got in his face. I'm sure she cussed at him. I'm sure she pointed a finger in his face. In her accusation that she's probably got all worked up. Now, I'm surmising, but, you know, I don't think she went in there quiet and soft. And he turned and he beat her. Ladies, listen to me. And men, too. Because there's some emotionally depleted women out there, too. You cannot control other people's actions, even if you call them dead to the right. You don't know how they're going to react when you correct them. But I can tell you this. If you correct an immature male, if you correct an immature female, if you correct an angry man or angry female, they might kill you. Even over something petty and small. When you're dealing with immature people and immature nations. You can do one slight against somebody, a nation, a club, and then the wrath they bring on you don't match which you did, even if they wrong. Now, you know good and well that you have been in relationships, that you have talked about catching them doing something, right? Or you bring something up in their life and they are wrong and they flip the script on you. And they say that you are the problem. You are the reason why I'm like that. You are dealing with an immature male. Now, now you say, what do I do? Well, the first thing is we got to go back to God's law. We got to go back to biblical principles for today, right? We live in the New Testament, right? Old Testament is hidden, but the New Testament is revealed. And New Testament tells us how to live. The New Testament tells us how to conduct ourselves. The New Testament tells us uh what our character should be. So the Bible is very clear, and it says this, flee fornication. And, and that's the first thing. Do not fornicate, have sex, give up all your holes. That's how one, one guy put it right there. He was homosexual. He says, man, I'm so lonely because I give up all my holes to these strange men. That's what he said. I say, I, I get it. You, you open yourself up. And, 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 and there's really nothing really more intimate than, and, and, and position-wise, than laying on your back and open up your holes to, to a man and put yourself in a vulnerable position and, such a, and, and get yourself in such a state that not only your body being yielded, but emotionally you are giving yourself. Spiritually, you are giving yourself. And you put yourself in this position and you look, and this man is over you, right? And you look at him, and he and he played ball or, or whatever whatever your type is. I don't know if you got a, you like fluffy males or athletic males or, or skinny males or shirt males or round males. It doesn't make a difference. But obviously, he's your type, right? Obviously, and whatever your type is, you look at him, and he might have a beard or he might be bald or he might have dreads. It, it don't matter. But you yield yourself. You give yourself. You give your back to him. You give yourself, you give your offices to him. And on the outside, he looks grown. On the outside, he looked like a man. On the outside, 
because we humans and we have testosterone, right? That's in the male. They give them facial hair and give us muscles. They're that part of being male, DNA. That's that's part of it. For, for a woman to change it to a man, she got to get t- testosterone injections. Are you with me? And, and 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 maybe some operation, but it starts with testosterone, right? If a man want to, you know, be a woman, then they give him estrogen. So you got this man, and he's full of testosterone, and especially athletes, right? Because athletes in high school become stars because the testosterone level is higher or got seeped into the body quicker than the next guy. So you go to high school and you see the little old short guys walking around, but the ones that got testosterone flowing at 13, 14 become football stars and basketball stars because they grow taller than everybody and they run faster than everybody. But in college, it all equals out, right? And so the big fish in high school is no longer the big fish in college because all the testosterone levels start to level out. You got this man in front of you and he is full of testosterone but he's not full of emotional intelligence. You got this man in front of you. He has a beard, because that's the touch from flowing. He got muscles, got shoulders, man. He got a six pack, some of them got eight. Man got thighs, got booty, he got calves. For some of you, some of you ain't got no calves. You got calves like Jay-Z. And you got you got there, and you could jump high and play ball, and and and, and he and he smells good. He smells good. Got a little piece of job at UPS, so he making all right. You know, got a little car. He keeps it, he keeps it clean, and all these things that attract you to him. And he got game. He 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 has game. He knows how to talk to women, and uh, and if you know how to talk to women, he know how to talk to you and your type. And yes, you're a type. I know you want to hear it, but you're a type. And so he 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 polished. His gain for your type. And he booked you. And you yielded yourself to him. But you didn't know he was an angry man. You didn't know he was an insecure man because he appears to you with so much confidence. He has so much, he has so much confidence. But you didn't know he was insecure because he had no daddy. You didn't know he was insecure because between the age of 16 and 21, he was in jail where he got booty raped. You didn't, you didn't know that, that that something happened to him during the early years when he was an orphan or, or, or he was in the state system and being raped and, and used by men and women. You, you you didn't know that he he was the smallest out the litter and used to get beat. Now that he's big, he got a chip on his shoulder. You didn't know his daddy said he was going to visit him. You didn't know and, and never showed up, never went to one of his games. And even though outside he looks very confident, inside his emotions never grew up, never grew up. But he is good at sex because you don't have to be emotional, intelligent to be good at sex. And he's good at sex. And you believe because he has this, he has this, he has this. But you didn't notice in the beginning that when somebody caught out in front of him in his car or the waitress got his order wrong, that he went from zero to 10. And he turned and smiled at you. And you was puzzled by that. And then one day you did something. It wasn't much. It was little. He said he was driving. He said, baby, go to my glove compartment and... um. I, uh, hand me a napkin. He said, all right. You go in there and you can't open it for some reason because it's tricky. And he like, he, she said, are you stupid or something? You can't open the door? And you're like, what the heck? I'm tra- i never been in the truck before. Oh, that's n- never mind. Your dad won't bleep and he curse at you. And you're like, what the heck was that? That was the devil showing you his hand. That was the devil. That was that was Lucifer himself, the fallen one, saying, This is the beginning of me taking over you. Because I am going to rule you and I am going to beat you 
and I am going to curse at you, and I am going to control you. And you say, why? And the answer is so simple, and but so frightful at the same time. And this is why he's doing that. Because men, now you ready? You stuck with me this long. Matter of fact, before I tell you that, let me let's just take a little short station break and let me tell you about uh, some of the ministry that's going on. One of the things that um, I'll let you know that you can reach me at my, my Gmail. That's BlaineCVan at gmail.com if you're interested in any of, of the products. or so. On. Also, it should be a link. Uh, whatever you find this uh, podcast, uh, my online merch, I have a, a, a hoodie out there and I have a cup that says the happy husband. Your husband, if you got a good husband, you need to give him that cup, right, to say the happy husband. And you, you need to tell him, look, you need to keep it on the job. <laughs> Run all those daggone women. Keep that up there. Tell everybody to know you're a happy husband, right? So anyway, that's, uh, that's also available and that's follow the link. Also, I want you to know that we're being sponsored by Heart to Heart Chapel. Heart to Heart Chapel is a virtual online chapel where we can marry you across states. And so um, if if you like what I say about marriage and you want to be a part of a, a man of God who loves his wife to marry you, right? I don't, I don't hate my wife. I'm not, I don't have no side chick, right? And so I, so I believe I have integrity and character in this area and that, you know, I live a sanctified life. Maybe that's who you want to marry you. Amen. And so, you know, I believe in marriage. And so, but, you know, you don't have to come where I'm at that you can reach out to me, DM me, and then we can go ahead and set something up. And also know that the package, whatever package you get includes before you marry counseling, which is imperative. And so, um, you must get premarital counseling. You must. If I can't emphasize that enough. You must get premarital counseling because you are not asking all the questions that you should to each other. You're just not because you're in the honeymoon stage. And some of these questions are hard, but they need to be answered before you say, I do and worked out. Because it will get asked in the marriage and you don't want to wait three years in the marriage and say, you know what, what do you think about childcare? What do you think about, uh, we got a baby now. Is he going to be a Muslim or is he going to be a Catholic or is he going to be a Pentecostal? You don't want to wait three years into the marriage because it's serious might be a red flag and it can cause harm and destruction. So some of these questions need to be worked out, worked out before you get married. Also, you can uh, go to my TikTok page. And um, you can find me there as the Happy Husband. My Instagram at Blaine C Van Ministries, and you also can find me on, on Facebook at Blaine C Van. Amen. So let's get back to the show. So one of the things that's, that's very important when you are dealing with immature males, right, is that they beat you, they lie on you. They cheat on you. They cheat on you with your best friend. They cheat on you with your mama sometimes, especially when you got young mamas. They cheat on you because they hate themselves so much. They disrespect themselves so much that they believe that if you go to bed with them, then you are stupid and you're a sucker because if you really knew who I was, and what I was really about, you wouldn't do it. And because you still go to bed with me, not knowing who I am, not knowing about the life that I'm in, not knowing that I'm bisexual, not knowing that I'm a cheat, not knowing that I'm a thief, not knowing I'm a crook, and you still go to bed with me, that means that you are stupid. That means that you are dumb. Now, you could say, no, that's not the reason why I went with him. I went with him because I saw potential in him. I went with him because I thought he can be something. I saw something in him. But he's saying, no, you're a fool for trusting in me, and I'm going to treat you like a fool, and I can sleep with anybody I want to. And anybody who sleeps with me is a fool. And anybody who sleeps with me is dumb. It's a dumb bee. 
And I'm going to treat you like that. Because if you had any sense, you run to the hills. If you have any mind, you would take off. Yeah, that's, that's what he's saying. Because men like this, who are emotionally depleted and lack emotional skills, test you out first. Before they start swinging, they're going to curse at you. Before they curse at you, they're going to poke you. They're going to push you. They're going to prod you. They're going to see any weakness in there. And they're going, and they're going to see, is the sex good enough with you so you can take the abuse? And it's a setup from the devil. It's a setup from hell. And now that we've been set up, now that you have been conditioned, now the enemy is now forcing your hand to go off after the same sex. The enemy is now forcing women to go after women and the men go after men, men because they say the other sex did me wrong. But the only reason why the other sex did you wrong, because you left the principles of God. You didn't obey the, the principle of God. You went to church. You went to church and you heard the sermon, but you didn't absorb the principles of God. And now you find yourself not wanting to get married or married three times, having multiple partners or just giving up marriage and the principle of God. And you just out there in the street or you did the opposite. You go to work, you go home, and you get a dog. You go to work, you go home, you get a dog because you didn't operate on the principle of God and you given up finding true love. Now, I'm telling this right now. For as many as there's emotional, depleted men out there, there are emotionally strong men. In my business, I'm an educator. I seen young men who have fathers, and I got young men who don't. The young men with fathers act a whole lot different than the young men who don't because the young men are grown underneath a matriarchic society. And they are conditioned to act like women when they're confronted with challenges and problems because that's all they seen. Now, I'm not saying that they're gay or homosexual. I'm just saying that when the mother had a problem, the auntie had a problem, and he watched them go through that challenge, then he believes that that's the way he's going to go through that challenge. Men that have fathers in their life act different. Now, I'm not saying that not to go with somebody who don't have a father in life, because the Bible is real clear. For those who, who, who are solitary, God takes them up and lifts them to a family. And some of these men who don't have fathers, the coaches pick them up. Right. So they had a male mentor. Right. And that's really the deal. You know, men were, that did not have and do not have male mentors. Are abusive in some conditions. Or they go totally opposite and become so passive that they can't even make a decision. That they do not know how to lead, that they literally when problems come, they run or they curl up in a corner and they hang onto the little blankie. And it goes through both extremes. Instead of having a man that know how to walk right down the line, the Bible says, that says narrow is the way that leads to life, but broad is the way that leads to destruction. These are the things that women need to know. You need to know that when you're dealing with an immature male, a mostly depleted male, and I'm going to recap real quick so you go over because I, I talked about a lot today. One is that they get angry quick. And the Bible says do not make friends with an angry man. So don't do that. Right? Two, angry men and people that abuse always check you little by little. They just don't all do it all of a sudden. Right? So they're gonna they're gonna know. So you need all the signs of beginning of abuse. There's plenty of um homes and, and and ministries dealing with domestic abuse that you should read up on so you could see the telltale signs 
of somebody who's steering you towards domestic violence. You need to know that, right? So that's also one of the fine points I wanted to bring today. Number three, which is really number one, do not abuse or forsake the principles of God. Don't do that. Avoid fornication. L ladies, I'm trying to tell you, if you avoided fornication, that means having sex before marriage, 99, 99% of your problems be gone. I'm trying to tell you, 99%, not 50%. 99, because the way of destruction always begin of believing the foundational principles of God in your life. And if you want to turn this thing around, you need the principles of God in your life. Amen. Next is I want to tell you, and, and it's the next thing. Once you decide, once you decide that you're going to obey God in, in these areas that cause you to go into the pit and traps. Once you decide that you're going to do that, God is going to wash your heart, man. God is going to renew your life. The presence of the Lord is going to come in your life when you confess that, God, I strayed. I strayed from you. I, I strayed from you. I, I forsake the teachings of my mother and my father. And I started to live my own life because I just wanted to do it. No excuse. You're not making any excuses. But say, God, I want to do the way of the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Once you confess that and the cleansing presence of God come in your life, you are going to want to get married. You're going to want to have a relationship, but now you're going to do it cleanly, clean. And then as you do it, clean unto the Lord, which is sanctifying and holiness unto the Lord. And now you're taking sound wisdom. So I'm hoping you record this or you're going to download this and hear this over and over again until we get in your spirit. Your heart's going to be open. And you're going to want to be found again. And so, and that's what we're doing now. God has placed it on my heart to do workshops now all across America, right? And we're also going to do some webinars also for those who can't get to America. For men and women who want to be found again, who want to lead a life that brings God honor and bring God glory. We're going to talk about in this workshops the Boaz principle and how in the book of Ruth God laid out a manifesto a blueprint of how to get your heart ready for your mate. We say soulmate, but you know, for your mate. For somebody who loves you and cares for you. And, and that's what you want, right? As we go through all these teachings and training, the real deal is you want somebody to love you. You want somebody to care for you. You want somebody to protect you. You want somebody that can bring security in your life. Looking for somebody that when he says your name, you know he's only thinking about you. You're looking for a husband, you're looking for a wife. You're looking for the biblical description of a husband. And sir, you're looking for a biblical description of a wife. I will encourage you now that if you want to hear this teaching, again, God has placed it on my heart to go to house to house. If you want to host chosen to be found workshop, I'm asking that you don't advertise it. 
I'm asking that you just pick 10 of your closest friends. That's all, that's all we're looking for. 10, that's how much a house can hold comfortably, gives it enough time. Um, sometimes um, some of the houses I'm going to, they do a potluck, and sometimes I cater. It just all depends how we, we work that out. And especially if it's only 10 there, we, we get somebody to cater. Ain't nobody need to cook or nothing. And then we get into the word. We get into the, the book of, of, of Ruth and we start to flesh out these principles and really work. And then we give a chance for God to work on your heart, especially if you got trauma, especially if you came out of a, 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 a really a wreckage of a marriage. And now two, three years later, you know, you just tired of being by yourself. And you hear God calling you. Are you with me? You hear God calling you. And to what? A relationship, a marriage, a covenant marriage. And now you're a little older and you're a little wiser. Now you're ready to do this thing right. See, Satan has lied to some of my friends. Satan has placed such a, a, um, a hurt on some of my friends' lives that they actually went to the arms of the same sex. And I know that's not the Lord. But I understand being hurt so bad and want to be loved so bad that you wouldn't be loved. Amen. I mean, and I get it. Matter of fact, God gets it. But it's not the way. Deep down inside, it's not the way. If you want to do the way. Now, if you if not, you're grown and you can do what you want. Right? And that's one thing about I appreciate about God, you know, unless you call specifically like Jonah, you can do what you want. You can do what you want. And um, and that's how the Lord is, right? But if you want to do things unto the Lord, right? And you want to live a life, and if and you want to stand before him, right, with no excuses, right? No excuses. And you want to stand before him and say, you know what, God? I'm going to do your way. And even though it don't make sense, even though I think I'll be hurt, even though... Then we're going to be lonely. I'm going to do your way. And I can tell you right now, if you're a Christian, you are not alone. And you'll never be lonely. And I found out that in, in the Bible that God doesn't say you're going to be alone. The Bible, what we call loneliness, I think it's the best way to put it, is called weaning. And that's God weaning you from the flesh. And so once you decide to go God, and Friday night rolls up and Saturday night rolls up, you might say, I'm lonely. <laughs> you might say, the, I'm, I need to go to the club or I, I, I need a drink or, or something. And you try to fulfill your life with activity because you don't like the feeling what we call loneliness, but God doesn't call it loneliness. He called it weaning. And that is the weaning off your flesh, the weaning of being in the life of the party, the, the weaning of, of being drunk, the weaning of being high, the weaning of turning up a club, the, the weaning of being a jet setter, you know, it's just, you know, it, it, it's tough when you fed the flesh for so long, for so long, and then you decide to go to cold turkey, and there is a process that you go through, but once you make it through, and if you Listen to today, and you made it on the other side. And you want to be found again. You want to be found again. Then think about hosting a workshop. I mean, my wife will come and minister to a, a tight group of your friends. And I'm telling you at the end of it, who knows what God would do, but I know healing emotional healing will take place. All right, everybody, this is Blaine C. Van. I am the happy husband. 
Um, you can listen to me here every Tuesday at 6 p.m. And also, you know, I'm going to have callings pretty soon, and you can add to the conversation and tell me about your ideals. And, and we can talk about marriage and your relationships as we move uh, forth in this thing. I mean, it's a movement, y'all. It's a movement. And God is doing a new thing in the earth. He's healing his people. He's delivering them. And he's placing them on the narrow road. And they are become, uh, becoming successful and great in God. All right, y'all. God bless you. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.